What was I scared of? By Dr. Zeus. Well, I was walking in the night and saw nothing scary, for I have been afraid of nothing, not very. Then I was deep within the woods when suddenly I spied them. I saw a pair of pale green pants with nobody inside them. I wasn't scared, but yet I stopped. What could those pants be there for? What could a pair of pants at night be standing in the air for? And then they moved. Those empty pants. They kind of started jumping. And then my heart. I must admit, I kind of started thumping. So I got out. I got out fast, as fast as I could go, sir. I wasn't scared, but pants like that, I did not care for, no, sir. After that, a week went by. Then one dark night in Greenwich, I had to do an errand there and fetch some Greenwich spinach. Well, I had fetched the spinach. I was starting back through town. When this pants went down the corner and they almost knocked me down. I lost my Greenwich spinach, but I didn't even care. I ran for home. Believe me, I really had a scare. Now bicycles were never made for pale green pants to ride in, especially spooky green pale pants with nobody inside them. And the next night I was fishing for a doubt trap on the roof of the river when those pants came rowing towards me. Well, I started to shiver. And by now I was so frightened that I'll tell you, but I hate to. I screamed and rowed away and lost my hook and line and bait too. I ran and found a brickle bush. I hid myself away. I got brickles in my britches, but I stayed there anyway. I stayed all night. The next night too. I'd be there still, no doubt. But I had to do an errand, so the next night I went out. I had to do an errand, had to pick a peck of snide in a dark and gloomy snide field that was almost nine miles wide. I said, I do not fear those pants with nobody inside them. I said and said and said those words. I said them, but I lied them. I reached inside a snide bush, and the next thing that I knew, I felt my hand touch someone, and I'll bet that you know who. And there I was, caught in the snide, and that dreadful place, those spooky, empty pants, and I was standing face to face. I yelled for help, I screamed, I shrieked, I howled, I yowled, I cried. Oh, save me from these pale green pants with nobody inside! But then a strange thing happened. Why, those pants began to cry. Those pants began to tremble. They were just as scared as I. I never hid such whimpering and began to see that I was just as strange to them as they were strange to me. I put my arm around their waist and sat right down beside them. I calmed them down, poor empty pants with nobody inside them. And now we meet quite often, those empty pants and I. We never shake or tremble, we both smile and we say hi. The Footbook by Dr. Zeus Left foot, left foot, right foot, right. Footbook 
feet in the morning, feet at night. Left foot, left foot, left foot right. Wet foot, dry foot, low foot, high foot. Front feet, back feet. Red feet, black feet. Left foot, right foot. Feet, feet, feet. How many, many feet do you meet? Slow feet, quick feet. Trick feet, sick feet. <coughs> Up feet, down feet. Here come clown feet. Small feet, big feet, here come pig feet. His feet, her feet, fuzzy fur feet. In the house and on the street, how many, many feet you need? Up in the air feet, over the chair feet. More and more feet. Twenty four feet. Here come more and more and more feet. Left foot, right foot. Feet, feet, feet. And how many feet you need? I can read of eyes shut by Dr. Zeus. I can read in red, I can read in blue, I can read in pickle colour too. I can read in bed, and in purple, and in brown. I can read in a circle and upside down. I can read with my left eye, I can read with my right. I can read Mississippi with my eyes shut tight. Mississippi, Indianapolis, and Hallelujah too. I can read them with my eyes shut. That is very hard to do. But it's bad for my hat and makes my eyebrows get red hot. So, reading with my eyes shut, I don't do an awful lot. And when I keep them open, I can read with much more speed. You have to be a speedy reader, because there's so much to read. You can read about trees, and bees, and knees, and knees on trees, and bees on threes. You can read about ankles, and all about ants. You can read about ankles, and crocodile pants. You can read about hoses, and how to smell roses. And what you should do on owls or noses. Young cats, if you keep your eyes open enough, oh, the stuff you will learn, the most wonderful stuff. You'll learn about fish bones and wish bones. You'll learn about trombones too. You'll learn about Jake the pillow snake and all about Foo Foo the snail. You can learn about ice. You can learn about mice. Mice on ice. And ice on mice. You can learn about the price of ice. Nice ice for sale. Ten cents a pail. You can learn about sad. And glad. And mad. There are so many things you can learn about. But... You'll miss the best things if you keep your eyes shut. The more that you read, the more things you will know. The more that you learn, the more places you'll go. You might learn a way to earn a few dollars, or how to make donuts, or kangaroos' collars. You can learn to read music and play a headset if you keep your eyes open, but not with them shut. If you read with your eyes shut, you're likely to find 
that the places where you're going is far, far behind. So, that's why I tell you to keep your eyes wide, keep them wide open, at least on one side. There's a walkie in my pocket by Dr. Zeus. Did you ever have a feeling there's a wasket in your basket? Or a Nero in your bureau? Or a wasket in your closet? Sometimes I quite feel certain there's a jet in the curtain. Sometimes I have a feeling there's a lock behind the clock. And there's a shelf up on that shelf. I have talked to him myself. That's the kind of house I live in. There's a link in the sink. And a zamp in the lamp. And they're rather nice, I think. Some of them are very friendly, like the yacht in the pot. But that yacht in the bottle, some are friendly, some are not. I like the zabel on the table. And the gear under the chair. But that bofa on the sofa. Well, I wish he wasn't there. All those nubbers in that cupboard, they're good fun to have about. But that nooth brush on my toothbrush, him I could do without. The only one I'm really scared of is the rug under my rug. And that chimney up the chimney. I don't like him, not at all. And it makes me sort of nervous when the soul scoots down the hall. But the yeps on the steps, they're great fun to have around. And so are many, many other friends that I have found. Like the Tella and the Nella, and the Gella and the Della. And the Bella and the Wella and the Zella and the Zella. And the Geeling on the ceiling. And the Zawa in my shower. And the Zillow on my pillow. I don't care if you believe it. That's the kind of house I live in. And I hope we never leave it. I had trouble in getting to Solo Salu by Dr. Zeus. And if you'd like to buy this book, check in the link description down below. I was real happy and carefree and young. And I lived in a place called the Valley of Vung. And nothing, not anything ever went wrong. Until, well, one day I was walking along and I guess I got careless. I guess I got gawking at daisies and not looking where I was walking. And that's how it started. Sock, what a shock! I stubbed my big toe on a very hard rock. And I flew through the air and I went for a sail. And I sprained my main bone in the tip of my tail. Now I never had ever had troubles before. So I said to myself, I don't want any more. If I watch out for rocks with my eyes straight ahead, I'll keep out of trouble forever, I said. But watching ahead, well, it just didn't work. 
I was watching those rocks, and I felt a hard jerk. A very fresh, green-headed quilligan quail sneaked up from in back and went after my tail. And I learned there are troubles of more than one kind. Some come from ahead, and some come from behind. So I said to myself. I just have to start to be twice as careful and be twice as smart. I'll watch out for my trouble in front and back sections by aiming my eyeballs in different directions. I found this to be quite a difficult stunt, but now I was safe, both in back and in front. Then new troubles came from above and below. A scratch at my neck and a scrink at my toe, and now I was really in trouble. You know, the rocks and the quail and the scratch and the scrink. I had so many troubles. I just couldn't think. There I was, all completely surrounded by trouble, when a champ rumbled up in a one-wheeler wobble. Young fellow, he said. What has happened to you has happened to me and other fox too. So I'll tell you what I have decided to do. I'm off to the city of Solar Salu, off the banks of the beautiful river Wahoo, where they are never troubled, at least very few. It's not very far, and this camel is strong. You'll get us there fast. So hop on, come along. I jumped up behind him. Then all through that day, the wobble wobbled on in a wobblesome way. The road got more bumpy, more rocky, more tricky. By midnight, I tell you, my stomach felt icky. And so I said, "Mister, please, when do we get to that wonderful town? Aren't we almost there yet?" Young fellow, he told me, "Don't start into stew. At sunrise, we'll drive into Solosalu, and you'll have no more troubles. I promise. I do." But when dawn finally came and the darkness got light, that wonderful city was nowhere in sight. Instead of the city, we ran into trouble. Our camel got sick and he started to bubble. We had to pull him in the one-wheeler wobble. So there, there we were in a dreadful position. A camel sure needed a camel physician. Now doctors for camels are not often seen, especially on mountains. They're far, far between. But we pulled our old wobble and set out to find some doctor while dragging our camel behind. I pulled, pulled, and pulled. Then the next thing I knew, I was pulling the camel and the wobble trap too. Now, really, I thought. This is rather unfair, but he said, "Don't you stew? I am doing my share. This is called teamwork. I furnish the brains, you furnish the muscles, the aches and the pains. I'll pick the best roads, tell you just where to go, and we'll find a good doctor more quickly, you know." Then he sat and he worked with his brains and his tongue. And he bossed me around just because I was young. He told me to go left, then he told me to go right, and that's why he told me all day and all night. Next morning, we located Dr. Sam Snell, who knew all about tonsils and camels as well. Our camel, he said, had a bad case of gleeks, and should lie flat in bed for at least twenty weeks. I was tired. How I wanted to crawl in that bed, but the wobble chap sent me away, and he said, "Your troubles are practically all at the end. Just run down that hill and around the next bend, and you'll come to the Happy Way bus route, my friend." 
the Happy Way bus leaves at 4.42 and will take you directly to Solasalu on the banks of the beautiful River Wahoo, where they never have troubles, at least very few. Well, the bus stop was there, and that part was just fine. But tacked on a stick was a very small sign saying, Notice the passengers using our line. We are sorry to say that our driver, Butch Mayers, ran over four nails and has punctured all tyres. So until further notice, the 442 <sighs> cannot possibly take you to Sola Salu. But I wish you a most pleasant journey by feet. Signed, Bus Line President Horace P. Sweet. So I went on by feet, thanks to Horace P. Sweet. And that Horace P. Sweet almost ruined my feet. A hundred miles later, my feet were so sore. Then, wouldn't you know it, it started to pour. I was drenched to the skin when a chap in a snicker splashed me up and he yelled, It's the midwinter jicker. The midwinter jicker came early this year and it's not going to be very comfy round here. Any fool would get out, so I packed up my things and I've come to my granddaddy's out in Palm Springs. Take cover, he yelled. Use my house if you wish. And the chap in the sneaker splashed off. I ran in the house and I fell in a heap. I needed my rest, but I just couldn't sleep. Did you ever sleep when your feet were like ice? The family of owls and a family of mice. I listened all night to the growls and the yowls and the chattering teeth of those mice and those owls while the midwinter jicker howled horrible howls. I tossed and I flipped and I flopped and I flept. It was quarter past five when I finally slept. When I dreamed, I was sleeping in a billowy billows of soft silk and satin, marshmallow stuffed pillows. I dreamed I was sleeping in the solar saloon on the banks of the beautiful river Wahoo, where they never had troubles, at least very few. When I woke up, and it just wasn't true. I was crashing downhill in a troublous flood with suds in my eyes and my mouth full of mud and my nose full of water and my ears full of shrieks of the owls flying off with the mice on their beaks. And I said to myself, now I really don't see why troubles like this have to happen to me. I floated 12 days without toothpaste or soap. I practically almost had given up hope when someone up high shouted, Here, catch the rope! Then I knew that my troubles had come to an end and I climbed up that rope calling, Thank you, my friend! I got to the top, but it wasn't a friend. And I saw that my troubles were not at on end. A big man on a horse scared me out of my wits, bellowed. I'm General Genix Can Schmitz. There's a war going on, and it's time that you knew every lad in this land has his duty to do. We're marching to battle. We need you, my boy. We're about to attack. We're about to destroy. Perilous poser of Pamelpoose Pass. So get into line. You're a private, first class. He gave me a shooter and one little beam, which was not very much, if you see what I mean. And then he yelled, Get that poser! Attack without fear! The glorious moment of victory is near. And the glorious general led the advance with the glorious swish of his sword in his lance and the glorious clank of his tin-plated pants. 
Then we went round a corner and found that, alas, there was more than one Pooza in Pommel Moose Pass. And Jenix Can Schmitz shouted out to his men, This happens in war every now and again. Sometimes you're winners, sometimes you are losers. You never can win against so many Poozas. And so I suggest that it's time to retreat. And the army raced off on its tin-plated feet. There I was with more Poozas that I'd ever seen. There I was with my shooter and only one bean. There I was. And I thought, will I ever get through to the wonderful city of Sola Salu? On the banks of the beautiful river Wahoo, where they never have troubles, at least very few. I had terrible trouble in staying alive. Then I saw an old pipe that said, Vent number five. I didn't have time to find out what that meant, but the vent had a hole, and the hole's where I went. Well, that vent where I went was sort of a funnel that led me down into a frightful black tunnel. The traffic down there was a mess, I must say, with billions of birds going all the wrong way. They bumped me with bikes and they banged me with dishes. I ran into ladders, beds, bustles and fishes. I skidded on garbage, I fell in a horn. Troubles, I wished I had never been born. I was down there three days in that bird filled up place. At least 8,000 times I fell smack on my face. I injured three fingers, both thumbs and both lips. My shin bone, my back bone, my wishbone and hips. What's more, I was starved. I had nothing to eat. And damp was it damp. I grew moss on my feet. Then, just when I thought I could stand it no more, by chance I discovered a tiny trap door. I popped my head out. The great sky was sky blue and I knew from the flowers I'd finally come through. To the banks of the beautiful river Wahoo. I couldn't be far now from Sola Salu. There it was, with its glittering towers in the air. I'd made it, I'd done it, at last I was there! And I knew that I'd left all my troubles behind when a chap at the doorway that shimmered and shined waved me, a wave that was friendly and kind. Welcome, he said as he gave me his hand. Welcome, my son. To this beautiful land. Welcome to sweet sunny Solasalu, where we never have troubles, at least very few. As a matter of fact, we have only just one, imagine just one little trouble my son. And this one little trouble, as you will now see, is the one little trouble I have with this key. There is only one door into Solo Salu. And we have a key slapping slibbered we do. This troublesome slibbered moved into my door two weeks ago, Tuesday at quarter to four. Since then, I can't open this door anymore. And I can't kill the slippered. It's very bad luck to kill any slippered. And that's why we're stuck. And no one gets in and the tower's gone to pot and it's terrible state of affairs, is it not? And so, said the doorman of Solosalu, my job at the door here is finished. I'm through and I'll tell you what I have decided to do. I'm leaving, he said. I'm leaving Solosalu on the banks of the beautiful river Wahoo, where we never have troubles, at least very few. And I'm off to the city of Bula Bubol, on the banks of the beautiful river Wu Wall, 
where they never have troubles, no troubles at all. Come along with me, he said as he ran, and you'll never have any more troubles, young man. That's what the man said, so I started to go, but I didn't instead. I did some quick thinking inside of my head. Then I started back home to the Valley of Vong. I know I'll have troubles. I'll maybe get stung. I'll always have troubles. I'll maybe get bit by that green-headed quail on the place where I sit. But I've bought a big bat. I'm all ready, you see. Now my troubles are going to have troubles with me. The Butter Battle Book by Dr. Zeus. And if you'd like to buy this book, check in the link description down below. On the last day of summer, 10 hours before fall. My grandfather took me out to the wall. For a while he stood silent. Then he finally said, with a very sad shake of his very old head, As you know, on this side of this wall, we are Yooks. On the far other side of this wall live the Zooks. Then my grandfather said, It's high time that you knew of the terrible, horrible thing that Zooks do. In every Zook house, in every Zook town, every Zook eats his bread with the butter side down. But we Yooks, as you know, when we breakfast or supper, spread our bread, Grandpa said, with the butter side up. That's the right honest way, Grandpa gritted his teeth. So you can't trust a Zook who spreads bread underneath. Every Zook must be watched. He has kinks in his soul. That's why, as a youth, I made watching my goal, watching Zooks for the Zook watching Border Patrol. In those days, of course, the wall wasn't so high, and I could look any Zook square in the eye. If he dared to come close, I would give him a twitch with my tough, tough, prickly mm. snake berry switch. For a while that worked fine, all the Zooks stayed away, and our country was safe. Then one terrible day, a very rude Zook by the name of Van Itch snuck up and slingshotted my snakeberry switch. <sighs> with my broken off switch, with my head hung in shame, to the chief Yukuru in great sorrow I came. But our leader just smiled, he said. You're not to blame, and those Zeeks will be sorry they started this game. We'll dress you right up fancy suit. We'll give you the fanciest slingshot to shoot. And he ordered the boys in the back of the room to figure how to build me some sort of triple sling jigger. With my triple sling jigger, I sure felt much bigger. I marched to the wall with great vim and great vigor, right up to Van Itch with my hand on the trigger. I'll have no more nonsense, I said with a frown, from zooks who eat bread with butter side down. Van Itch looked quite <gasps> sickly. He ran off quite quickly. And when happy to say, he came back the next day in a spiffy new suit with a big new machine. And he snarled as he said, looking frightfully mean. You may fling those hard rocks with your triple sling jigger, but I will now have my hand on a trigger. My wonderful.
little weapon, the Chico Rock snatch him. We'll fling him right back, just as quick as we catch him. We'll have no more nonsense. We'll take no more gup from you yooks who eat bread with the butter side up. I have failed, sir. I sobbed as I made the report to the chief Yukaru in the headquarters fort. He just laughed. We've done nothing at all of the sort. Our slingshots have failed. That was odd fashion stuff. Slingshots, dear boy, are not modern enough. Oh, we need some new fangled kind of gun. My boys in the back room have already begun. Think up a walloping with Zinger one. My bright boys are thinking they're on the right track. They'll think one up quick and we'll send you right back. They though did a great one. They certainly did. They though a pub gun called a kick a poo kid, which they loaded with powerful poo a do powder and ants eggs and bees legs and dried fried clam chowder. And they carefully trade a smart dog named Daniel to serve as our country first gun toting spaniel. Then Daniel, the Kickapoo Spaniel, and I marched back towards the wall with our heads held up high. While everyone cheered and their cheers filled up the sky. Fly, fly for the butter side up, do or die! Well, we didn't too, and we didn't quite die, but we did sure get worse. Poor Daniel and I. Vanich was there too, and he said, the old pig. The boys in my back room invented this rig. With an eight-nosed elephant toad and boom blitz. It shoots high explosive sour cherry stone pits and will put your dumb kick a poo kid on the fritz. Poor Daniel and I were scared out of our wits. Mm. One more by Vanage. I was bested and beat. Once again I limped home from the wall in defeat. I dragged and I sagged and my spirits were low. As low as I thought that they ever could go. When I heard a boom bah and a diddle dee dill and our butter up hand marched up over the hill. The chief Yukaru had sent them up to meet me, along with the right side up song girls to greet me. They sang, oh be faith, they'll believe in they butter. And they lifted my spirits right out of the gutter. smiled the chief Yukaru. We've just voted and made you a general. You've been promoted. You're putting your uniforms ready. Get in it. The big war is coming. You're going to begin it. And what's more, this time you are certain to win it. My boys in the back room have finally found how. Just wait till you see what they've potted up now. In their great new machine, you'll fly over that wall and clubber those butter down zooks one and all. Those boys in the back room sure knew how to putter. They made me a thing called a utterly sputter. And I jumped aboard with my heart all a flutter and steered towards the land of the upside down butter. This machine was so modern, so frightfully new. No one knew quite exactly just what it would do. But it had several faucets that sprinkle blue goo, which somehow would sprinkle the zooks as they flew and gum up that side down butter they'd chew. 
I was racing pell-mell when I heard a voice yell. If you sprinkle us cheeks, you'll get sprinkled as well. Vanich had a sputter exactly like mine, and he yelled. I feel Goo is working just fine, and I'm here to say that if Zooks can goo Zooks, you'd better forget it, because Zooks can goo Zooks. I flew right back home, and as you might guess, I was downright despondent, disturbed, and depressed. <sighs> and I saw, just as soon as I stepped back on land, so were all of the girls of the Butter Up Band. The chief drum majorette, Miss Yuki and Sue, said that the pretty sour flight that you flew, and the chief Dukaru has been looking for you. <sighs> I raced his office. The place was a sight. Have no fears, said the chef. Everything is all right. My bright back room boys have been brighter than bright. They fought up a gadget that newer than new. It is filled with mysterious moo like a moo and can blow all those zooks clear to Salamagu. They've invented the Bitsy, big Boy Boomeroo. You run to the wall like a nice little man. Drop this bomb on the zooks just as fast as you can. I have ordered all zooks to stay safe underground while the bitsy big boy Boomeroo is around. As I raced for that wall with the bomb in my hand, I noticed that every last yuke in our land was obeying our chief yukaroo's grim command. They were all bravely marching with banners a flutter down a hole for their country and right side up butter. That's when grandfather found me. He grabbed me, he said. You should be down that hole and your beer instead. But perhaps this is all for the better somehow. You will see me make history right here and right now. <gasps> Grandpa leapt up that wall with a lopless leaf and he cleared his horse throat with a bopless beep. He screamed. Here's the end of that terrible town full of zooks who can eat bread with their butter side down. And at the very instant we hid a clap, clap on the feet of the wall, an old vantage clapped up. The boys in his back room had made him one too. In his fist was another big boy boomeroo. I'll blow you, he yelled, into pork and wee beans. I'll butter side up you into smallest smithereens. <gasps> Grandpa, I shouted, be careful. Oh gee, who's going to drop it? Will you or will he? Be patient, said Grandpa. We'll see. We will see.